So now I have my loom warped up, I have my entwining on, I have my string heels on, and I have a shed stick in. And very importantly, I have taken the pins out above the top bar. By taking the pins out, the springs put the tension on your weaving. So now I'm going to do the first four rows. The first four rows and the last four rows are over and under warp pairs. And as they go around the pins, you see they fall as warp pairs. And the purpose of that is just to cover the ends of your warp a little bit better. So I'm just going to go with my batten over and under pairs. And the last one will be a single because we have an odd number of warps. So turn your batten on its side and then just run your yarn through the shed and you can make little butterflies or you can use long pieces of yarn or you can put it on a needle. And I, I am actually working on a table loom. I demonstrated warping on a mini loom, but I'm switched to a table loom just because it's larger and can show things a little bit better. So the tail, I left about an inch, and it's, I'm going to weave it back into the opposite shed. Okay, so that's one row. I'm going to do four rows. The beginning and the end are over and under pairs. And I am actually using a bulky yarn. Bulky yarn makes good pillows. This is going to be a pillow. And it also makes good floor rugs. I prefer to weave with a sport weight because it gives a finer design line and it's easier to beat down. So again, over and under warp pairs. Turn your batten on its side. So there are a couple ways you can lay your yarn in. I like to just hold it at a diagonal and then bead it in. Some people prefer to do bubbles, but I, I like to do the diagonal because it goes a little faster. So you just hold it at a diagonal and bead it in nice and gentle and let it feed in as it goes because it doesn't go straight across, it goes over and up and down around those warps. So that was two rows. So if I was going to do bubbles, I would just take the end of my fork and make a couple bubbles here. You, you can make your bubbles three or four inches wide, make them an inch to an inch and a half high, and then first secure your selvage, and then just beat your bubbles in nice and gently. Now that we have our four rows in, now we're ready to begin just plain weave. 
So I'm going to insert my batten underneath the shed stick, turn it on its side. Actually, I should probably do the other one first because I want to catch that edge warp. So I'm going to use my sheds, or my pull shed, or my string handles, turn it on its side. And just beat that in nice and gentle. And then my next row is going to be my shed stick. So put it in underneath your shed stick, turn the batten on its side, and then just weave your row in. Beat it in nice and gentle. I get butterflies in a kind of a little bit of a mess here. So now I'm going to do my pull shed. So the way you use string heddles on a cactus flower loom is it's actually a push and a pull. You put the back of your hand against the warps and pull up on the string heddles. And then just kind of move your hand over as you slide your batten in. So it's a push and a pull up. Turn it on its side and weave another row in. So I'm going to do about oh, an inch, inch and a half of plain weave. And then we're going to switch to some of the edge-to-edge -edge techniques. So join us next time for the edge-to-edge -edge techniques. In the meantime, happy weaving!